Now, I want us to pray for somebody in this nation. I want us to pray for a dear man of God that I respect and I, I love so well. His name is Apostle Arome Osai. And I'll tell you why I said we should pray for him. Seriously, we're going to take out two, three minutes to pray. Amen. Can I tell you something about the prophetic? Many of the prophecies that shaped history and contributed to the transition of nations in the Bible were given by nameless prophets. Are you hearing me? Or let's just go to sex. That's what you want us to talk about. We we'll, we'll enter there. Amen. And at the end of this meeting, there will be deliverance. I'm not saying that because that's what God told me this afternoon. Okay? So today is a whole bunch. Now, most of the prophecies that shaped Bible history and contributed to the major transitions of nations and kingdoms were given by nameless prophets. How many of you remember the story in 1 Kings chapter 22? When Ahab, was it 22? Chapter 20, when um, the Syrians came to attack Israel. And a prophet will meet Ahab and tell him, don't go to this place, go to this place. And then Ahab will ask the prophet, who is going to lead the, for the battle? The prophet will say, so, so group of people should lead. And three times the Syrians came, they were defeated by Israel. But the Bible didn't call the name of the prophet. Then much later, when the king of Syria saw that God was fighting for Israel, even though Israel was now backsliding and godless, you, now, you see how that even when somebody has backslided or a nation has gone away from God, they can still enjoy some of the mercy and the grace of God for several reasons. One of it could be if God has an intercessor, a man, that stands in between. Some of you are here, you are not serious in your work with God. There are people in your family, it's their secret prayers that nobody knows that is keeping everybody. If they die, five people will have chicken pox immediately. I'm telling you. Some of you, God has called you as the priest in your family and you have refused to heed the call because prayer is too hard for you. But somehow God is still preserving the family. You think it's because of you? No. It's somebody that God raised to be doing your work till you are ready to yield. That's how God works. God always has spare. He has spare generators, spare. If God is calling you to do something, God has spoken to nine other people at least. Just in case you choose to follow the flesh and disappoint God because you choose pleasure over the things of God. And the truth is, if you must follow God and work for God, you will suffer. That's just the truth. But that suffering produces glory. A glory that when you stand in it, you will dumbfound principalities and powers. Are you me? So there are some of you that God has called as priests, intercessors in your family. You know, you see it in your dream, but you have refused to pray. You are just going about your work and you're collecting your 150,000, 450,000, 750,000 and you are okay. But God is still keeping the family. You think it's because of you? Or because of that chicken change of 100,000 naira, you are sowing to God. You now think, you see, it's good to sow. But let me tell you something. You can't bribe God. When God gives you an instruction, you do it. Amen. So God has already raised other people secretly to be doing the work till you are ready to yield. Some say, God, let me get married first. Then this is your intercession thing will start amen since marriage is what so most of the prophets and when, when Ahab now made peace with that king the prophet came and told Ahab he said that man will revolt against you and he will plunder Samaria the Bible didn't tell us the name of that prophet there were many times that a lot of things happened in biblical history by the hand of God that were prophesied by people that were not known. So I want us to have a different approach to prophecy. God does not need to use the most popular person in a generation. 
God does not have grandsons. All of us are children of God. He can choose whomever he wishes. And it's your business whether you listen or not. Now, I want us to pray for Apostle Aram El Sai. The Lord told me something this week. I gave us, uh, I'd given us some few prophecies that the Lord gave me about uh, the elections in America, Donald Trump, some other things like that, that some of which has come to pass. Is that true? And please, I want you to know I'm, I'm talking with all humility, okay? There's no way, I don't know how else I will convey this, but it's just the truth. But for me to say I didn't hear from God, it will be a lie. All right? So don't you go and say, oh, he's proud. No, 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 no. I've been hearing from God before you came to Pneumatic. Amen. When it comes to these kinds of prophecies, it comes to me, I don't pray for it. It just comes. It comes easy. Easy. Sometimes it can be like God is talking to me. I can hear him literally with my ear. Or I can just be somewhere and God will just write it on my thoughts. And then I come and say it to you and it happens. It's the same way God spoke to me this week. So I told you that I see a conspiracy against Donald Trump. And the church will need to pray. Globally, we need to pray for him. We need to pray for America. The church in America will need to wake up and pray. And I told you I saw witchcraft. I told you about his assassination. Attempt. In, was it when? February. And it happened last month, right? I told you about witchcraft. So there's going to be, there's a lot of um, consultations with the forces of darkness going on in America now. And what they will do is they will not just fight against him. Now, I'm not a pro-Trump candidate. Me, I'm a servant of God. Are you hearing me? It's good to just side with God. Men can change. God does not change. Amen? Good. So, they will not just fight him with witchcraft. They will fight anything and anyone that appears to stand with him. So I saw a video of Apostle Aram El Sai prophesying again about witchcraft that will be used. How many of you saw that on social media? What do you look at when you go on social media? Okay. <laughs> Stay there. Amen. If I'm talking to you, I'm not interested. Let's just go to the teaching. Amen. It's, that's why God doesn't talk to many people. When he's talking, we are not interested. So he just keeps his things to himself. Then when things happen, we now say, ah, God, where were you? He was there. It's just that when you were fasting, you were interested in the time you will break your fast, not in what God will say. And the, when the time came for you to break your fast was when God now wanted to speak to you. Amen. So I saw a video about him saying that, and that shows you that the spirit of God is one. Then this week, one of those days, God spoke to me and said, the church should pray for him. There's going to be an attack against him. There's going to be attempts in plural against his life. But I believe that the covenant he has with God and the mercy of God will keep him. And this is not something that will be hidden. It will be a national thing. Even him will come out and say it. There's going to be serious attack on him. And any other man of God that is going to stand as a prophetic voice, that means you also pray for me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hmm. Pray for your pastor so you don't know what we go through. When you are sleeping in the night, there are spirits you don't see that appear. We see them. Amen? So, we need to pray for him. God will preserve him from witchcraft, from assassination, from poison. What did I say? From witchcraft, from assassination, from poison. That was how I stood there. I, I, I spoke. It looked like a joke. You saw it. So I'm saying it the same way. Take it seriously or don't take it seriously. But I've told you what the Lord said. Okay? Now let's raise a prayer for him. The reason why we are raising a prayer for him because... Is a borrowed mercenary to the United States. All right, idolatry, 
perversion, immorality, mammon has, has, has eroded the gospel in America. So much so that if God does not do a quick work, America is about to enter into serious apostasy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we need to pray for that man. You know, I was thinking about something. There are some men of God, when you look at their preaching schedule and their itinerary, please you can be seated if you want to. If you look at their preaching schedule and their itinerary, they preach every week. So it looks like you don't have time to prepare a sermon, right? So there are some men that because of their work with God and their labor in the presence of God, in the word and in prayer, these men have become like libraries in the spirit. This is what God showed me today. Are you hearing me? You guys are not interested. Let's go to the teaching. Amen. Now, I'm talking under the anointing. Though. Forget that I'm calm like this. I don't know your own. There are some men. That's what the Lord showed me today. There are some men that, you know a library, you know a shelf with books, different books. There are some men that's how they are in the spirit realm. We can't lose a man like Apostle Aaron. You know what I'm saying? So let's, let's pray for him in two minutes. Now we'll use him as a point of contact to every servant of God, every genuine servant of God currently in the United States and all the servants of God in Nigeria. We'll pray for preservation from evil, preservation from death, preservation from witchcraft attacks, from assassination attempts, from, from poisoning. Preserve your servants, Lord. Preserve them. Preserve them. They say, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Preserve him. Preserve his family. Preserve his ministry. Preserve his, his reputation. Preserve his work. Preserve your work through him. Let angels be deployed around him. In Jesus' name. 